Well, hello and welcome to Straight Talk on Mining, the webcast series. I may be making forward statements, so be forewarned. Here we move on to module number four, and there's a sample here, again, of rhythmically banded epithermal vein. And this is composed almost entirely of quartz, and it comes from the Eureka vein from Cerro Negro in Patagonia in Argentina. Now, Argentina is another place, or Patagonia anyway, where there is no active volcanism. There's, there are no volcanoes that are erupting today, but they erupted back in the Jurassic Age around 150 million years or so ago. And I've actually, that sample that you see on your screen, I've got it right here in my hot little hands. I collected it myself, and you can see the rhythmic banding in it. The interesting thing about this is that it contains no gold, no gold. It has pathfinder elements in it, so it's anomalous and things like arsenic and antimony and that, but no gold. And why is that important? Well, it shows you that uh, there's certainly epithermal processes that have gone on, but the goody zone is not at the surface. And it's very, very important to understand where you are in these epithermal systems, both horizontally, horizontally and vertically. And that's the key to success. So I'm going to tell you another cautionary tale here. And this has got to do with my own, uh, my own experience at Fruta del Norte uh, back in, in 2006. Now, we made the discovery in uh, March of 2006. But prior to that, uh, I purchased the property around 2002. And you can see um, there's an area here down the south, uh, hashered and red, and that's what's called the Bonza Las Penas zone. And it averages about, well, we, we outlined half a million ounces of just over one gram per ton gold and about six grams per ton silver down in this zone but it's not the home run and it's covered here all this blue stuff is actually flat lying sandstone that came in after the gold deposit was formed it lies on top and there was a 60 meter high cliff here roughly 200 feet high and because these drill holes were running around one gram per ton i said ah the hell with it what's the point in going further north because we'd have to drill through 200 feet of dead rock to get down to something that's only going to run a gram per ton. And certainly in 2006, a gram per ton wasn't going to make it. And so um, we chased other things and other places. But I had a professor by the name of, of Robert Hodder, Bob Hodder, uh, at the University of Western Ontario. And he was uh, kind enough to come down and look at this thing for me. And he said, Keith, you have to follow that thing along the trend and see what it does. And I ignored him because <laughs> of this cliff. And I thought, ah, there's not going to be anything up there. We just forget about it. And then what happened, of course, was that in 2005, towards the end of 2005, the geologist found outcrops in this area up here. On the other side, on the other side of this sandstone flat lying mesa. We didn't even know that this stuff was up here. So it's a cautionary tale had we uh, continued uh, up there and, and, uh, and sampled it and drilled it, uh, we would have made the discovery maybe two years early. Uh, and of course you see lots and lots of drill holes up here and these all had high grade in them. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. So um, that's uh, what we call window um, area that contained no uh, overlying sandstone uh, had outcrops of what's called chalcedonic quartz. This is an epithermal type of quartz uh, containing a mineral called marcasite, which is like pyrite and highly anomalous in arsenic, antimony and mercury, naturally occurring on the surface, but very, very little gold. And it was next to an, an induced polarization anomaly here. Um, but this area actually didn't really show up on the geophysics too well. And uh, the board of directors of Aurelian were actually 
against drilling this thing. Uh, but because of the proximity to the IP anomaly, they love the IP anomaly, which is this orange thing, but this turned out to be a red herring. And Steve Leary, who was in the last shot, and his team discovered outcrops and float pieces, loose pieces of rock of uh, chalcedonic quartz containing high uh, amounts of arsenic, antimony, and mercury, but very weakly anomalous gold and silver in this area. Now you can see there's a green, it's green here. It shows up as an IP anomaly, but it's very, very subtle. And then the cliffs of the Hoyin formation start down here. So this is, again, this is the window here where there is no overlying uh, sandstone. Had there been overlying sandstone, we never ever would have found it in life, no way. So we drilled the IP anomaly. It was a red herring, lots of pyrite in it, but no grade. And then uh, Steve Leary uh, backed up the drill hole uh, and drilled underneath the uh, uh, geochemical anomaly where we had the arsenic, antimony, and the mercury. And he hit a hot spring sinter. And you can see all this white stuff, and it's banded. And this was naturally banded. It's in the drill. Uh, this is a box of drill core and drilling through this thing here. But this had very, very little gold in it. Now, of course, when you're out there running a drill program, you don't have time to send this stuff off to the assay lab before the next hole. Uh, you know, it's very, very expensive to put the drillers on, um, on downtime and uh, have them working, uh, you know, and, uh, and not, uh, not producing. Um, so, uh, he backed up the drill, um, and I think this was maybe the next day, and you could see visible gold in that core, and actually he hit Bonanza Hole of 237 meters of 4 grams per ton gold. This is really essentially right underneath the center. The center is here, and it just kind of pinched out over here, but we found it in other places, and uh, and so that, that was his story. So um, this is what... Uh, it looked like um, when the very first discovery holes had been drilled, but the assays weren't even back from the lab. And um, Steve Leary quite rightly projected through, this is, an, uh, I found this on my old computer, projected through the geology to be down here. So why is this stuff all running about one gram per ton? And it's because of this fault and a couple of other faults that are underneath the sandstone here. And this is a block of rock that was actually moved up relative to the stuff to the north and then eroded down into what we call the base metal zone. The base metal zone is rich in lead, in zinc. It's usually much more silver rich than gold. And in this case, it's only running one gram per ton gold. So it's not going to make it. However, again, if I followed the trend, as the professor had told me, Professor Hodder, Back in 2003, we would have found this thing a couple of years earlier. So cautionary tale here. Listen to your professors because <laughs> they know a lot more than you do. But very, very important to know where you are vertically in the system. This is much higher in the system than down here because this stuff has been block faulted and then eroded down into the root zone. Very important thing. So that's what I wanted to explain here and demonstrate. Again, here's a sample of beautiful, beautiful drill core, nice rhythmic banding, as you can see, beautiful gold in it, uh, confined in the various bands. Uh, these are the gentlemen uh, who were responsible in part for the discovery. And here I am back last November uh, when I went to visit the mine in front of the discovery outcrop. Now, of course, when it was discovered, way back in 2005 there was only a little bit of this rusty zone uh sticking up above the surface and this is now next to a road and so it's been excavated here in the road cut um, but this is a damn good piece of geology done by these gentlemen to find this stuff so that sample that i showed you earlier that contains no gold this came from the eureka vein in cerro negro in patagonia and cerro negro is now a mine uh, being operated today, but it was owned by Andean Resources. 
and Andean resources, as I said, there is very little gold up here in the top of the vein. And this is a long section. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's the, the darker stuff is um, the higher grade. So this is a very, very common way to portray these kinds of deposits. Um, you go down the length of the vein and you multiply the grade by the meter thickness and you come up with a number and so all of this is high grade in here but at the surface virtually nothing virtually nothing again it's important to know where you are in the system and andean was com company number five to discover this company number five because the earlier people had drilled here or just taken samples off the surface and not realized that you had to go to depth to see what you got. So we're at the end of this module again, and here the pilgrim drowneth his sorrow. Then spake this pilgrim from the east, I am a wretched man, for a lust of gold hath lured me the shovel and the pan lured me to the shovel and the pan. I saw in dreams a pile of gold, its dazzling radiance pour. No more my visions are of gold. Alas, my hopes are ore. O-R-E. So that's the end of that. 